Discerning Hearts presents In Search of the Still Point with Dr. Regis Martin. In episode 20, Dr. Martin reflects on Meditation on My Brother Michael. Shortly before taking leave of this world, Sir Winston Churchill, who had lived a very long and illustrious life, was reportedly asked about the state of his soul. I am perfectly ready, he said, to meet my Maker, Whether my Maker is prepared for the ordeal of meeting me is another matter. Only someone of the stature of Sir Winston could pull off a piece of effrontery that egregious. And thank heaven, there's probably not much of him in most mortal men. I doubt that there was any at all in my brother Michael. He was far too humble to trade witticisms with the deity. And certainly there wasn't anything the least bit long or illustrious about his life, which is what accounts for the fact that following an unexpected heart attack ending it, the world scarcely took any notice. The news was not carried on network television, and there were no flags flying at half-mast. In other words, my brother didn't make much of a splash, I don't suppose the impact of his passing was felt by more than the few people who came to the church to pray for the repose of his soul. And that may be a good thing, by the way, because while everyone knew Churchill, not everyone loved him. With Michael, however, it was exactly the opposite. Everyone who knew him loved him. Not that he will have escaped judgment, however, We mustn't imagine that the prospect of falling into the hands of the living God will prove less than harrowing for everyone. Death followed by judgment, that involves a searing examination in which the weeds and the wheat are finally separated. As Francois Mauriac writes, Christ warns us that we must answer for what we have received when it is himself we have received, what shall we not have to answer for? God is easily pleased, in other words, but not often satisfied. Like a good storyteller, he loves his creatures. Indeed, he is intensely, infinitely interested in each of them, but he judges them without sentimentality. Thus we all owe God a death, following which there is the inevitable reckoning. In death, Joseph Ratzinger reminds us, a human being emerges into the light of full reality and truth. Man is what he is in truth. Judgment will consist in the removal of the mask in death. The judgment is simply the manifestation of the truth. Indeed, when a man leaves behind the company of other men and walks toward the seat of divine judgment, all pretense will be stripped away. There is no room for maneuver, no way to disguise the weight of what one has done or become. Then the true worth of a man's deeds whether empty straw or solid metal, will be shown in an absolutely piercing light, which is God himself. Life, the poet Keats reminds us, is a veil of soul-making. We are here to make our souls, and death, that is the final scene we are all destined to play. Whether to say to God, Thy will be done, and thus to fall blissfully into his arms, or God to say to us, Thy will be done, and thus to sink into an everlasting horror of pain and loss. I love the story of the old woman and the onion, who found herself in hell because she hadn't done a single good deed in this world, except once when she gave some wretched man an onion. And there in the depths of hell, the stem of of that onion reappears. 
She at once grabs onto it, and soon others try and hold on to it as well. So what does that wicked old woman do? She kicks them all away, saying, It's my onion, mine, mine. Straight away, she sinks into the fiery lake of hell forever. By all means, we may keep the onion, but only if we are willing to give it away. It is only love, you see, when you give it away. What else are we left with if not the logic of love, the logic of the gift? And really, what else have we to give away if not ourselves? The purpose of life, Paul Claudel tells us in his tidings brought to Mary, is not to live. The feet of the children of God are not bound to this wretched earth. It is not a question of living, but of dying. Not a question of building the cross, but hanging from it and giving what we have joyfully. I do not believe my brother Michael was like that old woman. Iniquity was not at the source of whatever struggles and torments he faced. That was his saving grace, that all his life he was looking for love, both to give and to get. I have no doubt he'd have shared that onion. In fact, he'd probably have turned it into a pot of stew, like one of those countless wonderful meals he made for our dad during the last years of his life. He was the best of us. He really was. At least that's what my sisters have been telling me for years. And you know, I think I finally get it. He was the most kind and the most gentle of us all. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Thanks for listening. This is Regis Martin in search of the still point. You've been listening to Dr. Regis Martin in search of the still point. For more episodes in this series, visit discerninghearts.com or you can find it in our free Discerning Hearts app or on many other streaming platforms. Discerning Hearts is a 501c3 nonprofit Catholic apostolate dedicated to evangelization and spiritual formation through the use of new media. To learn how you can support our mission, visit Discerning Hearts.